A very good Saturday evening. This is the weekend edition of Brampton News. We're coming to you live and direct this evening from our news studios in Colombo. I'm Joel Outskun. Let's start off with these headlines for today. Sri Lanka signs Hambantara the port deal with China. Conduct of the opposition comes under criticism. Prasad Kari Rasam appointed as new foreign secretary. Group trapped by strong currents from Maha Oil rescued. Starting with our lead story this evening. China Merchants Port Holdings and the Sri Lanka Ports Authority signed the amended agreement for the Hambantara port today. The signing took place at the Ministry of Ports and Shipping in the presence of Minister Mahinda Samarasingha and Chinese Ambassador to Sri Lanka, Yi Jiangliang. Secretary of the Ministry of Ports and Shipping, L.P. Jayampati, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, Dr. Parakramadi Sanayaka, signed the agreement on behalf of the Sri Lankan government. And Executive Vice President of China Merchant Group, Dr. Hu Jianghua, signed this agreement for the government of China. Adasankarana Givsuma Yatate American dollar billion ekai dasama ekai deka kelim yane bandagari. The investment of 1.12 billion US dollars under this agreement is directed to the Treasury. The Chinese company had undertaken to make a further investment of 600 million US dollars to move the Hambantara port to a stable operational position. All clauses in this agreement are subject to the rules and regulations of the Constitution. The government of Sri Lanka takes security of this. They will reach a decision in six months to retain all those who are qualified or to grant compensation under the labor rules of the country. As per the President's proposal, a new clause has been included to make amends to the existing clauses after the signing at any time given that the conditions are met. This agreement will be tabled in Parliament. No one can say that what was tabled in Parliament was something else. <laughs> एकाक पार्लिमेंट दूरे दिल्ली बात करा तब एकाक आसान करा किया महावैली योजना वाले पास से यहाँ पे राज्य के लेवल ना विशाल है तम्मा this will be the largest development drive in Sri Lanka after the Mahavali Development Project. This agreement will give a boost to Sri Lanka's economy. The surrounding districts will experience the taste of development after many decades. 300,000 to 400,000 direct and indirect job opportunities will be created. With this maritime infrastructure investment, and other diverse investments, such as in the future, the proposed International Maritime Center, Sri Lanka will be well positioned to play a strategic role in the One Belt, One Road initiative of the government of People's Republic of China. People have a nationality and a citizenship, but the commerce, the investment, the business has no border. The port facilities have been built in Hamatota and will be built in the coming future. Although nobody can move it away from there. They belong to the corporate citizen of Sri Lanka. We look forward to a prosperous future of close relations and friendship with Sri Lanka as we embarked on the great journey of the development of this country. The cabinet paper on the Hamantara port agreement reads that all movable and immovable properties in the port would be transferred to two companies, namely Hamantara International Port Services Corporation Private Limited and Hamantara International Port Group Private Limited. Hamantara International Port Services Corporation Private Limited will have a capital of 606 million US dollars and will be involved in the common use of facilities and service management which includes security, maritime services, operation, expansion, silt removal, emergency response and environmental pollution control at the Hamantara port. 
Her month at International Port Group Private Limited will have a capital of 794 million US dollars and will be involved in the operation, management, infrastructure development, freight container control and commercial operations development at the Hamantota port. Sri Lanka Ports Authority will have a 50.7% stake in HIPS while China Merchant Sport Holdings will own 49.3% of it. 15% of HIPG will be owned by the Sri Lanka Ports Authority while China Merchant Sport Holdings will own 85%. In a statement, China Merchant Sport Holdings Company Limited announced it agreed to invest 1120 million US dollars. Of the total investment, 973.658 million US dollars will be paid to Sri Lanka Ports Authority for the acquisition of the 85% issued share capital of HIPG. The statement reads that HIPG shall use a portion of such amount to acquire 58% issued share capital of Hambantara International Port Services Company Private Limited. The remaining 146.342 million US dollars shall be deposited into a bank account in the name of the company in Sri Lanka and will be utilized for such Hambantara port and marine related activities as may be agreed with the government of Sri Lanka within one year from the final payment of capital injection in HIPG. It goes on to say that during the first 15 years from the concession agreement effective date, Sri Lanka Ports Authority and the Government of Sri Lanka shall ensure that it shall not obtain any fresh tenders, granting any right to any third party, or discuss, negotiate, or enter into any agreement or agreement with any third party in relation to the development of any port, terminal, development directly in competition with the port services and activities carried out at the Hambantara port within 100 km perimeter from the periphery of the Hambantara port. The demonstration was staged against the inking of the Hambantara port agreement today. <laughs> The All Ceylon Port General Workers Union protested opposite the port entrance today. They made false promises to the trade unions to ensure we let go of the struggle. They have become liars today. The working masses condemn the signing of this agreement of betrayal. We say this to the government. Even if you sign it, the people will not allow you to enforce it. On Wednesday, there was angry confrontations at the Valikade police station when joint opposition MPs arrived there following the arrest of persons during the strike action of petroleum workers. His first is in possession of more footage of this confrontation. Parliament experienced another bitter situation yesterday. The joint opposition voiced a protest when the vote on passing the resolution under the Essential Public Services Act took place in Parliament yesterday. The Office of the Speaker reported that several MPs had attempted to seize the maze during the heated situation. When the Speaker announced that the resolution was passed, 
the joint opposition claimed that it was not. Honorable B.M. Swaminathan. There are a few jokers in Parliament. I accept that we are not taking stern action on them. The very people who committed corrupt and other illegal acts are trying to appear before the media as they are the good people. However, Parliament has become a jester's court because of them. If one says that anyone has the freedom to say anything because there is a democracy, this country will never move forward. Therefore, authorities must take firm action. Parliament is like a jester's court. It was decided to discuss the income tax bill yesterday evening. However, they caused chaos like little children, forcing an adjournment. They were seated in the chairs of the President, the Speaker and the Prime Minister. They were acting out a drama in Parliament. It is a situation at a wedding where after the couple leaves, everyone else gets on the stage to take photograph. Such is the mentality of those people. <laughs> It is said that Mahinda Rajapaksa will gain power somehow once again and change the constitution to become president a few more times. It is said that Gotabe and Namal Rajapaksa have a similar idea. It appears that Prasanna Ranatunga must also be given that opportunity. One might assume there is no issue in that. We will continue until the year 2025. The actions of the Speaker in Parliament yesterday will not be appreciated by any world democracy. We protested to save the port and the relentless assault on the petroleum workers by thugs. We want the government to officially say that they will make the arrests. That is why we demonstrated. We are not the ones who passed the resolution when there was no mace in the House and adjourned sittings to the 4th of August. Who called the thugs? Who stormed into the police and obstruct the duties of the police? Think before you vote is what we say. With that, we'd like to shift your attention to some weather news this evening. Now, heavy downpours have brought an end to the dry weather experienced across several areas in the country. Water level of the Maui increased with the excessive rainfall experienced early this morning in Aranaik and Gampara areas. Three people who crossed the Garol Bridge to bathe were unable to return due to the rising water levels. They were rescued with the intervention of the locals and the police. A heavy downpour in Kandy this morning caused flooding on the Hira Sakala Road and the Bogadabatta area. A bridge constructed in an improper manner across the Meda Ella caused flooding in the area. The entire village is inundated and we couldn't recover anything. 
The chief engineer of the Kandy Municipal Council said the bridge in question is a temporary one. The contractor failed to remove the temporary bridge constructed during the project. This situation is because of that. The contractor has been informed to pay compensation. The Central Hills experienced a heavy rainfall this morning. The Med Department forecasts showers or thunder showers in the southern Sabaragamu, northwestern and western provinces. Fairly heavy falls of about 75 millimeters can be expected at some places, particularly in the Kalutara, Gaul, Matara, Ratnapura, K Gaul, Trincomalee and Muletheu districts. Tea cultivators claim their cultivations are at risk due to the ban imposed on glyphosate. The ban on importing glyphosate came into effect with the publication of the Gazette on the 11th of June 2015. This was due to concerns raised by a group including Venerable Atrulia Ratanathera claiming that the herbicide caused kidney disease. A number of research and study was carried out by specialists on this matter. Fluoride, aluminium, cadmium, glyphosate, heavy metals, fungi, as well as working under excessive heat could be given as causes for this disease. Experts have never reached a consensus on what the exact reason for the disease is. There was discussion on glyphosate as well. The result of studies conducted on glyphosate do not say that the disease is caused directly by glyphosate. <laughs> The ban on glyphosate has caused complications in the plantations industry. Tea cultivators say that they are left helpless as no alternative has been introduced to remove the weeds. The government suddenly stopped the use of the weedicide. How are we supposed to get rid of this now? We are left with nothing. We simply have to stay at home. Farmers have started to abandon the industry because the ban on glyphosate. Our membership is decreasing by the day. The number of kidney patients from 1985 is the same as today. There was no increase in the number simply because of the weedicide. When this weedicide is used, we can maintain the crops for three months. We have massive expenses to bear in the tea industry. I have a report of the WHO where there is a clear indication. If they cannot fully convince that there is a direct impact on CADU or cancer, we call for the ban on glyphosate to be revoked at least for the tea sector for a limited time. There is another issue. We have reliable information that glyphosate is still in the market although it has been banned. It has been smuggled from India via Putlam. Therefore, my argument is if you regulate the imports, we can monitor this or this could lead to extremely low quality glyphosate entering the market. We decide it's unnecessary for commercial agriculture. That is my opinion. <laughs> I cannot say that the ban on glyphosate was enforced based on scientific proof or evidence. None of the studies conducted in 2013-2014 proved that glyphosate causes kidney disease. If we control the usage, we can gain some benefits. As a planter and someone involved in the trade, the lack of glyphosate is causing a number of issues to the plantation industry. I believe that authorities should take another look at it. There is no direct correlation between glyphosate and kidney disease, even when it comes for paddy farming. This was a political motive, that is the truth. I approve what Navin Desanayaka says. The authorities should reconsider and make a practical decision. Venerable Ratunatera was instrumental in electing this government. We campaigned to ban the use of glyphosate. Today, no one can say that this chemical is to blame for chronic kidney disease. In tea estates, the weeds are bigger than the tea plant. I believe that the use of glyphosate must be approved through the intervention and supervision of all government institutions. Venerable Aturulia Ratanathera, who called for the ban on glyphosate, commenced a campaign in Kanthale to promote poison-free cultivations. Venerable Ratanathera promoted the poison-free cultivation. However, no government has supported us. They call for the ban on glyphosate, but they do not tell us how to remove the weeds that grow here. Venerable Ratanathera promoted the production of poison-free paddy but we don't have a proper harvest. Venerable Ratanathera together with the agriculture minister came here and took part in a festival in a paddy field. They showed it to the whole country via the media. However, chemicals were used on those crops. The paddy was not local. It was a variety called 352. This was the fraud. How can farmers cultivate if this situation continues? How are they to survive? We say this to Venerable Ratanatero. He preached something to us. What happened after his poison-free campaign? 
we want to ask him what is the alternate that he has introduced the office of the registrar of pesticides says when such a weedicide is imported to sri lanka it is subject to a two-year field test the test was carried for glyphosate as well when it was imported to the country Moving on to more news this evening, Prasad Karyavasam, who served as the ambassador for Sri Lanka to the United States of America, was appointed as the new foreign secretary. Prasad Karyavasam will replace Asela Birakon, who has been appointed as the new secretary to the Ministry of Tourism Development and Christian Affairs. The Ministry of Law, Order and Southern Development says that only seven Tamil nationals died in the 1983 July riots. MP Uday Gamampilla posed a question in Parliament seeking information on Tamil nationals who died and were reported missing in the 1983 July riots. It was Minister Gayanta Karunathuleka who responded to the question on behalf of the Minister of Law and Order. The Minister referred to the records in the Ministry saying only seven Tamil nationals were killed in the 83 riots and none injured. Colombo is not listed in the list of districts where the riots took place. According to government information, two were killed in the Badula district with 67 people left displaced. One fatality was recorded in the Mathura district while two were killed in Kandy. Two deaths have been recorded in Kegol with 48 people displaced. As per these records, the total tally comes to seven deaths and 118 displaced in the 83 riots. It cannot be a riot if only seven people died. We cannot accept it even if they say 70 or 700 people died. 53 people died just in prisons. I was in the parliament represented in the Kilinochi district back then. The government statement that seven died in the 83 riots is a lie. This is a joke. The report says nothing happened in the Kalamu district. A lot of people died in the Kalamu district. Especially in prisons, even people's eyes were harmed. So the government has to issue a correct report on this. UPFA MP Ramesh Patarun expressed his views on the controversial bond transaction at a gathering which was held in Akmimana Gol. Ravi Karunanayaka was given 160 million through the bond transaction. Can a dignified UMP supporter ever vote for this party? That was a simple gift which was given for exempting the taxes of the distillery which was built in the east by perpetual treasuries. When Ravi Karunanayaka comes out, he will definitely rattle out it is the Prime Minister who was the mastermind behind the bond scam. Everyone at one point started calling him Mr. Clean, but he's the history's dirty man. Dirty man, dirty man. A special meeting was held between a group of policy reformists in the American government and a group of Indian politicians. Senior journalist J. Sri Ranga participated in the meeting. J. Sri Ranga met with the whip of the Indian National Congress in the Indian Parliament, Dipendra Singh Huda, at the discussion in New Delhi. Dipendra Singh Huda serves as chairman of the Indo-UK Forum of Parliamentarians. J. Sri Ranga thereafter met with Bajayant J. Pandey, a member of the Indian Low House of Lok Sabha. Pandey was also representative of the Rajya Sabha between 2000 and 2009. A ship with Sri Lankans on board has been detained in northern Cyprus by Cypriot authorities. International media reports the crew has been detained for interrogation and the Sri Lankans on board are being investigated. Cypriot authorities detail the vessel as an issue has arisen in determining whether the 20 Sri Lankans on board the vessel are Trini sailors or migrants. The vessel named Sista was scheduled to travel from Djibouti to the coast of Libya. However, according to foreign media reports, it had travelled to Cyprus. The group of Sri Lankans had got on board the ship from Djibouti to travel to Egypt with the aim of travelling back to Sri Lanka via air from Egypt. The group has claimed that they had paid 16,000 euros to get on board the ship and be taken to Italy, while five of them have requested for asylum in Cyprus. When news first inquired from the Minister of Foreign Affairs regarding this, an officer said despite foreign media reports, they are yet to receive information officially regarding the issue. The sixth meeting of the Sark Ministers of Health, hosted by the Government of Sri Lanka, took place today. People have a national representatives from SARC, member governments and institutions were present for the event. Our region continues to face the challenges of malaria. 1.4 billion in our region are living at risk of contacting malaria. 
Although Maldives and Sri Lanka has already achieved elimination status, the risk remains due to migration within the region. In this regard, several other diseases such as TB and HIV also have implications for spread due to migration. While health assessments for migrants are important, it is equally important to see how we extend access to care and treatment in the context of providing universal health coverage. Every attempt must be made to reach out to the poor with basic health facilities at affordable prices. This must be a priority for the SARP. We must redouble our efforts to improve the health of our peoples. Similarly, public-private partnership must be mobilized to create affordable and efficient healthcare facilities. This will undoubtedly contribute to the lofty goal of the Charter of promoting welfare of the people. The foundation stone for a bridge in Surya Baba took place under the auspices of Minister Sajid Premadasa. The construction is done under the Samata Sahana program at a cost of 34.2 million rupees. Rajavi Hitapukale Rajamali Gave Sidunu Deva Lada Sampurne Mamataka Kaladi. They have forgotten what happened in the palace when they were ruling the land. They used three armed forces, the commandos and the police to build sandbag wall for racers. They have forgotten everything. Today they claim we are using the war heroes and laborers. We defeated the conspiratorial forces. When there was an attempt to use the petroleum strike aimed to bring back the former president, the supply and distribution of fuel was termed as essential service. The police and the three armed forces were used to ensure that the essential services is provided to the country. Well, with that, we wrap up the weekend edition of Prime Time News. Thank you very much for stopping by. It was a pleasure to have you with us this evening. More news follows on our award winning website that is www.newsburst.ok. I'm Joel Outskun. Have yourself a great evening ahead.